Hi everyone, this is Brandon Atkins with Hawkridge Systems. Today let's spend a few minutes discussing the implementation of serial numbers in SOLIDWORKS PDM Pro to help us generate unique part numbers for files we create in SOLIDWORKS. During your design process, it may be common to use generic names for some files, but in many companies it's much more common to use a unique identifier such as a part number. SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional makes this simple by allowing you to implement serial numbering systems. This helps your company to incorporate standard operating procedures for things like part numbers in a way that's completely automated. No more guesswork to make sure that you've pulled the right part number from some other system before saving or renaming your files in SOLIDWORKS. Let's first start by heading over to our administration tool for PDM. I'll go ahead and connect to my PDM Professional Vault. Log in as the administrator. You'll notice we have a serial number section here, which is pretty self-explanatory. There's no limit to the number of serial numbers you can create in PDM. You can use them for really any purpose. If you wanted a unique identifier for engineering change orders, project numbers, part numbers is usually the, the first item that most people would tackle. I'll show you just how easy it is to set one of those up. Right click on serial numbers, create a new serial number. I'll just give this one an example name here. This is my naming convention. And the string that you're going to use for formatting can be done in a number of ways. For example, if you want a counter value that's based on maybe the date, the year, month, something of that nature, I'm just going to do a simple counter value. Also keep in mind that these can come from additional sources. If you need to build a list of serial number values, or even pull information from a custom PDM add-in, perhaps that gathers information from another software that you have implemented like ERP. I'll go ahead and set up my five digit counter. And this is now something I can leverage directly from the PDM or SOLIDWORKS interface. I'll show you an example as a SOLIDWORKS user. How can I take advantage of these new uh, part numbers to actually save my files and apply the correct naming conventions for my company. This all starts with settings at the SOLIDWORKS level. You will have to log into a client system as the administrator to get this started. You'll notice that these vault settings at the bottom, these are specific to the vault. So you'll only have to really change this from one client and it will apply those settings to the vault environment. So I can pick my PDM professional vault. You'll notice that I can apply serial numbers on a part, assembly, or drawing basis. What this means is you can apply different serial number systems to each of those file types. The nice part about this is I can use those for automatic naming conventions as soon as a user saves one of their files in SOLIDWORKS. So I've already got this set up. If I go create a new file, new part design, as soon as I go to save this file, Notice that it will pull the next counter value from my serial number system. So 1509 is the next part number that's available. I could go ahead and save this new part in my system. Let's do that. I've created a new part, no geometry yet, but I could go through and complete my data card just to make sure that I've got the information there for searchable metadata. I'll skip that for now. These techniques can also be employed for existing files. So for example, let's say I have a generic name on one of my parts and I choose to save this in my PDM vault and I want to apply my eight digit part numbering. So we'll go ahead and just do a save as. No longer is this called a sprocket by name. It's going to pull, again, the next number available that's in my part numbering scheme. So I can trust that the system will apply that information for me in an automated way and keep track of everything without having me do it manually. Complete my data card. Maybe this is gonna be a purchased item. I know what vendor I would like to purchase it from. And I happen to know their part number, which again, this information could be automated, but for something like a vendor part number, might be applicable to just type that in. And there we go. We've saved our part file, brand new part number was pulled for it, and I didn't have to keep track of it on my own. I hope you enjoyed these tips. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates and tips in the future.